Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video you will learn the basics of using buttons. So you will learn how to change the buttons properties from code and handle on click events. Currently we only defined our button here in XML and to actually use it in our Kotlin code we need to assign an ID to it. So in general whenever we want to access or modify a view from within our Kotlin file and that is almost always the case we need to assign an ID to it because Android Studio must know which exact button or which exact view we want to modify or access. So I hope your current layout looks like mine here. If not, then check out my previous video and then you can follow through how I did that layout. Now I want to go to that text tab here to assign an ID to our button so we can access it from our Kotlin file. So let's click on text and here you can see all the views from our layout file written in XML. And first you can see all the edit text that we used, those input text fields. And if we scroll down, then here's our button. And the first line you can see that we attached an ID to it, or actually Android Studio attached an ID to it, because we used a constraint layout here. And Android Studio somehow needs a way to define which view is next to which view and for example, it needs to define that this button is um, below that birth date text field. And for that, Android Studio needed to assign IDs anyway, because otherwise it couldn't even know which view is relative to which view. And because of that, Android Studio just automatically generated those IDs like button 16 here or edit text 4. Um, don't worry if you have other IDs here. Those just have to, have to be unique. But I want to change that ID here because button 16 doesn't really say what this button is about. And you should always use IDs that directly describe what this, um, what kind of view it is. So in this case, a button and what this view does. So in this case, it is the apply button. So the convention for that is, or my personal convention, which I think is really helpful, is that we first write an abbreviation of the type of the view. So in this case, it's a button and I'll write BTN for button. And then after that, what kind of button it is. So in this case, it's apply. And as you can see, because we changed the ID here, then Android Studio doesn't know um, that button 16 ID because we didn't change it here. And it wants to constrain the end of our um, edit text here to the start of our button 16 and button 16 now doesn't even exist anymore. So to actually show you how you can change that everywhere, I will revert my change to button 16. And if you then click onto that ID and click um, shift and F6, then you can rename that property and it gets renamed everywhere. So make sure you only rename the part after that slash here because the part before that just tells Android Studio that we want to um, add this ID to our IDs pool, basically. And after that, I'll just write button apply here and click on refactor. And now take a look at this button here, at this button 16. When we click on refactor, this also gets changed. So this is a really helpful feature of Android Studio. And I also want to change the IDs of our edit text fields here because I want to access them from, um, from our code because my goal for this video is to show you how we can click on that button and display a log message that just shows us all the text of our edit text. So let's just scroll to the top here and that first edit text is the edit text for the first name. So in this case, because now it's an edit text, I won't name it with btn, instead I will use et for edit text and then first name and we didn't use that shift f6 option here so it doesn't get changed everywhere in the code so let's revert it again oops not that one um and click on that edit text id shift f6 and then only rename the part after the slash so et first name here and then it gets changed everywhere. The second edit text is for the, the last name. So let's click Shift F6 again. 
and I'll name it et last name. The third one is for the birth date. Shift F6 again and I'll name it et birth date. And finally the one for the country. Shift F6 et country. And that's it. Now we have named each view we have with a unique ID that directly describes what this view is about. Now that's everything you needed to change in your XML code. Now we can go back to our main activity.kt because we now we want to um, access our button from within our Kotlin code. And if you don't know where you find that activity file, then you can click on your app folder, go to Java, the first, not the generated one, the first com folder, and then your package will open and there's your main activity. So double click on that to open it up. So how can we now achieve that we can access our button apply from within this onCreate function here. If you come from Java, you maybe know it this way. So we created a reference to our button there. So val button apply. And I always recommend to name your views exactly like the ID is. And then you set that to find view by ID. So this function just um, scans your XML files and returns your exact view you want to find here with the um, corresponding ID as a Java or Kotlin object. So inside of these angle brackets, you need to put the type of that view, which is in this case a button. And in the parentheses here, you have to put the ID of that button. And you find all the IDs of your XML views in R, which stands for resources, dot ID, dot followed by the ID. And here's our button apply. However, in Kotlin, we don't need to do this. So we can remove that whole line because in Kotlin, we are able to directly call the button by its ID. So we can just write button apply here. And you see that little line below that button apply. And that means that we need to import that. So we need to explicitly tell in Red Studio that we want to use that button here and we import it by pressing Alt plus Enter. And then you can see if you just open up your import statements up here, click on that little plus here, then you can see that Android Studio imported Kotlin X dot Android synthetic dot main dot activity main dot and then such an asterisk here. That just means it now imported every ID from your activity main layout file. So if we have done that, then you can just use that button apply from within your code. And normally if you have a button, then you also want to detect when the user clicks on it to execute a certain piece of code. And to achieve this, there are on click listeners in Android that you can attach to your buttons. And you can not only attach those to buttons, instead you can attach on click listeners to every kind of view. So you can um, listen to on click events no matter what kind of viewer it is, but, in, but a button is in most cases just the best visual representation for something you can click on. So to actually assign an on-click listener to our button apply, we have to write a dot after that, and then we can access all those functions that we can call on our button apply. And right here you can see set on-click listener. Just press enter here if you have that current option selected, and then you can write your um, code that should be executed when the user clicks on that button inside of those um, curly brackets here. And what I want to do here is, as I said, I want to read in all the strings that are written into our edit text fields and then simply write a log message that prints all those fields that, for example, a, a new user has applied to that formula. So let's write val and then we want to read in the first name. Well, first name is equal to et first name because that's the ID for our edit text first name dot text to access the text of it. And you can see that is not a string that is an editable. And because of that, we need to convert it to a string. So let's call to string after that. Let's do the same for the last name. 
where our last name is equal to et last name dot text dot to string. Then val birth date is equal to et birthday dot text dot to string. And finally for the country, val country is equal to et country dot text dot to string. And finally, if we have done that, we can um, lock the message. So as I showed you in the logcat video, you can write log.d and then you have to write the tag. So in this case, it's just main activity. And also make sure if it doesn't find the word log here, then you have to import that android.util.log. Otherwise, it won't find it. Then after you entered that tag here as a parameter, you can enter the log message. And here we can now insert our strings that we extracted from the, the edit texts. So we can write, for example, dollar first name, then insert the last name, born on, oops, um, birth date. from country just applied to the formula. Then make sure to open that logcat tab below here to actually see what the console is putting out and run your app. All right, now we can enter something here for example, Peter Miller born on 1st January 2020 and he is born in New York, for example. So, and now to actually only show you our log that we want to print here, we can take our tag and paste it in the search bar here to only show log messages that are related to main activity. And if we now click onto our button here, take a look in the logcat, it prints Peter Miller, born on the 1st January 2020, from New York, just applied to the formula. So that is how we can actually respond to on-click events by the user in Android. And that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful for you and you understood everything. If not, then don't mind asking your questions in the comments so I can answer them. And I hope I can see you in the next video again. Have a good day. Bye-bye.